हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ द टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज हिमैटनिक्स हिमैटनिक्स आर द सब्सटेंसेस रिक्वायर्ड इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ब्लड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सब्सटेंसेस रिक्वायर्ड इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ब्लड आर आयरन विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व फोलिक एसिड एंड अरिथ्रोपॉइटिन नाउ फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सिंप्लिसिटी एंड ईजी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस टॉपिक इज कवर्ड इन सिक्स पार्ट दैट इज सिक्स वीडियोज फर्स्ट पार्ट Uh, that is the first video deals with introduction to hematics and the process of erythropoiesis that is the process of formation of red blood cells process of erythropoiesis helps us understand how iron vitamin b12 folic acid and erythropoietin are essential for the formation of red blood cells and how their deficiency results in anemia second video that is part 2 covers physiology of iron that is absorption transport metabolism and physiological functions and excretion of iron third video that is part 3 covers iron preparations that is oral and parenteral iron preparations and acute iron poisoning that is iron overload we will discuss symptoms and treatment of iron overload fourth video deals with physiology of vitamin b12 that is absorption transport metabolism and physiological functions of vitamin b12 and oral and parenteral vitamin b12 preparations fifth video deals with physiology of folic acid that is absorption transport metabolism and physiological functions of folic acid and its oral and parenteral preparations sixth video that is the last video in the series covers pharmacology of erythropoietin a hormone produced by kidneys and its role in the formation of rbc this is the second video that is hematics part 2 in the series of videos on the topic hematics now as we all know hematics are the substances required in the formation of uh, red blood cells and iron is essential for the synthesis of red blood cells in the bone marrow now today we are going to discuss the physiology of iron and under physiology of iron we will cover absorption transport physiological functions metabolism and excretion of iron now let's first talk about the distribution of iron in the body 66% of iron is present in hemoglobin 25% of iron is stored in body as ferritin and hemosiderin uh, 3% of iron is present as myoglobin in the muscles while 6% of the iron is present in iron containing enzymes like cytochrome and catalase now uh, when we talk about uh, the dietary iron now iron is not synthesized in the body and it is provided to the body only by the diet now the diet uh, contains two types of iron one is the heme iron other is the inorganic iron now heme iron is the iron which is uh, present in the food stuffs like meat Uh, poultry whereas inorganic iron is the iron which is uh, found to be present in green leafy vegetables uh, for example spinach jaggery dates now heme iron is uh, much uh, better absorbed compared to the uh, inorganic iron now uh, this absorption of heme iron is uh, uh, is better and up to 35% of uh, heme iron is absorbed directly in the intestinal mucosal cells without the use of transporter and very important to note that this heme iron has iron in the uh, ferrous form that is fe2 positive form inorganic iron is absorbed uh, uh, less only 5% of inorganic iron is absorbed and here uh in the in the green leafy vegetables uh for example spinach iron is present in the inorganic form and this inorganic form is in the ferric oxidized form that is iron is present as fe3 positive now this fe3 positive iron that is the ferric form is not absorbed directly and it is required to be converted to the ferrous form that is fe2 positive form so the fe3 positive iron uh, form which is present in the diet uh, for example green leafy vegetables is to be converted into the fe2 positive that is a ferrous form because it is a ferrous form which is absorbed in the intestinal mucosal cells now and, and uh, next let's talk about the regulation of rbc synthesis uh, by iron 
Now, the process of formation of RBC in the bone marrow is called as erythropoiesis. Now, in my first video, that is hematomics part 1, I have covered the process of erythropoiesis and the requirement of iron. Iron is required for the formation of hemoglobin and deficiency of iron results in iron deficiency anemia. Now, in this schematic diagram, as it is very clear, colony forming unit uh, of uh, uh, erythroid series that is the precursors of uh, RBC. These precursors of RBC are stimulated uh, by the erythropoietin. Now these colony forming unit erythroid series they develop into proerythroblast. Now these proerythroblasts they undergo a series of division and differentiation and finally they are matured in the body to produce the uh, final mature erythrocytes or the red blood cells. Now, for the process of a conversion of proerythroblast to the erythrocyte, that is for the for the development of proerythroblast to erythrocytes, uh, the cells, uh, the stem cells, they require folic acid, vitamin B12, and iron. Iron is required by the proerythroblast for the synthesis of hemoglobin. Now let's understand absorption and transportation of iron. Now as we have already uh, discussed, there are two forms of dietary iron. One is in the uh, heme form, other is, is in the non-heme form. Heme iron is derived from animal food sources like meat, uh, sea food for poultry. And in the heme iron, the iron is present in the ferrous form. Uh, that is the iron is present in the Fe2 positive form which is the absorbable form of iron and therefore uh, from the heme iron is absorbed directly as the ferrous iron that is Fe2 positive iron. Now when we talk about the non-heme iron, in the non-heme iron the iron is present in the ferric iron form that is Fe3 positive form. Now ferric iron cannot be absorbed directly in the intestinal mucosa and therefore first it has to be reduced to the ferrous form. Now, uh, when we talk about the anterocyte, this is the structure of an anterocyte. On the apical surface are present enzymes. Uh, these enzymes are called as the duodenal cytochrome B enzymes. Now, these enzymes, they reduce the ferric iron form to the ferrous iron form, that is Fe2 positive form. Now, this ferrous iron form is then transported inside the intestinal mucosal cells by a transporter called as a divalent metal cation transporter 1. So, once it is transported inside the cell, this ferrous iron that is Fe2 positive iron is either stored as ferritin in the intestinal mucosa or it is transported in the blood. Now, apoprotein is the protein present in the intestinal mucosa. Now, this apoferritin it oxidizes uh, ferrous iron into ferric iron. And after that, apoferritin uh, binds to the iron and the iron is stored as ferritin. A number of ferritin molecules aggregate to produce hemosiderin. So, ferritin and hemosiderin are the storage forms of iron. And this is how iron is stored in the intestinal mucosal cells. Uh, now, a transmembrane protein called as ferropotin 1, it uh, transports uh, the ferrous iron outside the mucosal cells. Now, an enzyme called as uh, hephaestin or ferrooxidase present in the mucosal cells, an enzyme called as uh, ceruloplasmin in the blood oxidizes uh, the ferrous iron to the ferric iron so that the iron uh, can bind with the protein uh, termed as a transferrin. Now, this transferrin, it binds with the iron, that is the ferric iron, to form a complex. Now, this transferrin, ferric iron complex, is then circulated in the blood and this blood is transported to the body cells like the reticuloendothelial macrophages, myocytes and the uh, erythropoietic cells. Now, this transferrin, it binds to the transferrin receptors on reticuloendothelial cells, myocytes, and then erythropoietic bone marrow cells and the iron is transported inside the cells. So this is how erythropoietic cells receive iron which is essential for erythropoiesis. Now let's talk about the breakdown of erythrocytes. 
Now, lifespan of erythrocytes is 120 days and thus RBCs are continuously replaced. Worn out or damaged erythrocytes are broken down by reticuloendothelial macrophages in liver, spleen and bone marrow. Now, uh, once these erythrocytes are broken down, there is release of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is further broken down into heme and globin. Globin is further broken down into amino acids which are recycled and which are used for the synthesis of protein in the body. Well, the heme iron it further breaks in, in bilirubin and uh, Fe2 positive iron that is the ferrous iron. Now, this ferrous iron is recycled. It is a uh, utilized by the body for the formation of RBCs while bilirubin it is in the unconjugated form it reaches the liver where it is conjugated and this conjugated bilirubin it is released in the bile bile is further released in the intestine and in the intestine bilirubin is excreted in feces as stercobilinogen now some of the uh, bile now some of this uh, uh, bilirubin it spills in the bloodstream and it reaches the kidney and in the kidney, this bilirubin, it is excreted in the urine as urobilinogen. Thus, uh, bilirubin, it is excreted in the feces as stercobilinogen and it is excreted in the urine as urobilinogen. Now, functions of iron. We all are aware that uh, iron is required for the synthesis of hemoglobin and therefore dietary iron is an essential constituent of hemoglobin. Now, when we talk about the excretion of iron, most of the iron which is released by the breakdown of RBCs is recycled and some of, it, of uh, uh, this iron is excreted. Now, we know that uh, iron is stored in the gastrointestinal mucosal cells as, uh, as uh, ferritin and hemosiderin. So, exfoliation of these gastrointestinal mucosal cells excretes the iron. Further, Desquamation of skin, that is a exfoliation of skin, that is a removal of dead cells of the skin also excretes the iron. Little iron is excreted in the feces and minimal amount of iron is excreted in the urine and sweat. So, uh, this is all about the absorption, transport, metabolism, physiological functions and excretion of iron. Now, if you find this session helpful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. You can ask your doubts in the comment section. And I will definitely answer all your questions. Uh, thanks for watching the video.